You know, I was sitting down with myself and I was thinking about this question that I've seen discussed a lot on Twitter between the Young Bucks and the Usos and who is the better tag team, who is the goaded tag team. Now, ultimately, I believe both teams will go down in their respective Hall of Fames when their careers are said and done. They're both phenomenal tag teams. But who is the better of the two? Now, obviously, we will never truly know because the only way to really know who is better is if they, you know, go fist to fist, but that's not going to happen. So in the terms of pro wrestling, it's based off of art. It's completely subjective. In my humble opinion, I believe that the Young Bucks are better than the Usos. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how do you think that the Young Bucks are better than the Usos? Listen, I have broken down. Now, it didn't take me too much time to break it down because, like I said, I feel like it was almost very fast that I realized the Young Bucks were better. And I feel like a lot of this is not the Usos' fault. But we're going to break down five different categories and really weigh the options on how I believe the Young Bucks are better than the Usos. And there are some aspects where I believe the Usos do have the Young Bucks beat. But it's not just the, oh, well, the Young Bucks are better and that's just the end of the story. Now, we're going to actually break it down and we're going to talk about this. We're going to have a real discussion here about why the Young Bucks are just a better tag team than Usos. And I have five categories for you guys here we're going to discuss today. We're going to talk about the evolution of these tag teams. We're going to talk about the characters, the in-ring promos, the in-ring style, and then the influence they have over the pro wrestling business. And that's how we're going to nail down how I believe the Young Bucks are better. I'm not going to do this whole, oh yeah, we're going to... Uh, weigh them down and talk about oh is who wins this and how they're like no i think the young bucks are just better i'm gonna let you know that we're right off the bat and i'm gonna explain to you how they're better in these categories starting off with the evolution of both tag teams now we gotta really have to go back with the young bucks and the usos and i gotta say this much i have seen the usos wrestle for over 11 years i've been watching the uso since their debut in wwe back in 2010 i can legitimately recall their debut their theme song bum i recall the original theme song them being managed by tamina like i can recall the entire thing and you know i feel like as wrestlers they've definitely gotten better now i don't really think they were ever bad at wrestling Maybe in their FCW days, but I didn't watch them in FCW. But when they first came into WWE, I didn't think they were bad at all. I thought they were uh, good at best. Uh, I think okay, decent might be the word to say for them. But over time, they've evolved. And I feel like really they, they got better fairly quickly. Uh, there were quite some matches I remember them having in 2014 with Luke Harper and Eric Rowan with Cody Rhodes and uh, Dustin Rhodes or Goldust at the time uh tag team matches in 2015 with Sin Cara and Kalisto or the Vaude Villains or tag team matches still with um Eric Rowan and Luke Harper interchangeably tag team matches with Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, or Dean Ambrose, and then 2017 going into those matches with the Usos. They have really adapted uh, the evolution of their characters over time. Of course, going from the 2010 form, they really didn't have much of a character. They were kind of just the Samoans. Like, I don't, I don't want to say just the Samoans, but they were... They were just the Usos, in a sense, when it came out. They had Tamina by their side, and that was really the, it for them. About two years later, they then became the Usos we knew and loved them as when I was younger. And that was the when they would come out and do the whole dance, you know, you know da, 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 being on the chest. When I say Us, you say, oh, you used to have the, you know, the color schemes. One Uso had one side painted, the other Uso had the other side painted. You used to have the pink and green colors. They were very hype. And, you know, they there was a genuine excitement I got when I saw the Usos when I was younger. And it, it still sticks with me a bit. Even though they're heels now, I still get excited when I see them because they're really great heels especially in their very early heel runs in 2017 when they were I would say just starting to get in the footing of being heels you know they were really different they stood out from the rest of the roster they had this this swagger to them you know they used to wear the black joggers and the hat and the backwards hat or the forwards hat whatever it may be and the sweatshirt and the hoodies you know they I can relate to that style that they dressed as. Not gonna lie, I can relate to it. So I, I felt it. I, I liked it a lot. And they, I felt like in ring, they 
were at their best, and they, I feel like they're still really great. But in ring, they were definitely at their best from that 2014 to 2017 period. Not to say they went down after 2017, after that feud with the New Day. But I feel like, personally, their best in-ring action has been 2014 to 2017. And they've just been on a roll since then. Now, I stopped watching WWE consistently about a year ago, so I can't speak for all the matches they've had since the joining Roman Reigns and the Bloodline, but they've had some really good six-man tags Roman Reigns in the past before the heel turn. Um, they've they they killed it, or at least Jey Uso killed it in a singles run when Jimmy Uso was injured and they had Jey Uso feuding Roman Reigns. He really proved that he can go on his own. We haven't seen Jimmy Uso go on his own yet, but you know we've seen that they when broken apart, they can do well for each other. So in that aspect, they had a great evolution. The Young Bucks, I've only been watching them for six years. You know, when I first started getting into or really getting out of my WWE bubble in 2014, the first tag team that I was really made aware of outside of WWE and TNA was the Young Bucks. Like, they were the first team I heard of. Now, I didn't know much about independent wrestling. I didn't know much about New Japan. I didn't know much about Ring of Honor. None of that. So, I really went off of the opinions of others that I heard because I didn't have much of a uh, pool to choose from because I didn't know how to research the Young Bucks. So, of course, a lot of people at the time did not like the Young Bucks. So, I instinctively did not like the Young Bucks. And for quite some time, I didn't like the Young Bucks. Um, you know, earlier in their careers, I think it is very easy to call and very easy. I think they, they just, that's what they were. But, you know, when you think of the term spot monkeys, I feel like a lot of people gravitate towards the Young Bucks because early in their careers, that's really what they were. It was a lot of dives, a lot of that gringo lucha libre style that we've known the young bucks to be and i feel like it's almost ignorant nowadays to just hold them to that mantle hold them to that standard that they used to be and use that as a catalyst now for why you hate the young bucks which i see so often i see so often people are like oh man the young bucks you know they're just nothing but spot monkeys and i'm like if you had this argument five years ago i would understand that but in 2021, it's almost it's almost borderline just incorrect because they're not just that. And that's where I get into the evolution. I feel like once you get into the later half of the Young Bucks before they went to AEW, they started to not tone it down because I don't feel like they ever really toned it down in their terms of spots. They've really just gotten better. Um, they started to show that they're able of they're capable of putting on like great five star classic matches we saw a lot more of those matches in ring of honor with them and the briscoes we saw that in new japan with them yo and show in the junior tag division with them evil and sonata in the tag division even though i hated their feud a lot and then of course the great tag team match they had against the golden lovers in 2018 they really started to show they are capable of having great matches not just the uh all over the place fun matches that they can have then once all the wrestling happened i feel like they really started to show just how versatile they can be and they truly evolved once aew started they really um became what i feel like a lot of wrestling fans wanted them to be to begin with and that was this team that could really do it all and i'll talk a bit more about that later on and like i said i don't want to get too deep into it but i do feel like evolution wise the young bucks have grown and evolved a lot more than the usos have not to say the usos have not evolved at all but i feel like in the ring they got better but then after they got better, they almost just consistently stayed the same. And I feel like that's not really their fault. That is them being stuck in the same company for 11 years. Not really stuck because they chose to be there. But them being in the same area for the last 10 years, doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Talk about it more in a bit. But I would give it to the Unbox. Moving on from there, we talk about characters. I would honestly give this to the Usos. Very on in their career, very early on, I would say absolutely not because they didn't really have a character. Uh, once they became, you know, the when I say oos, you say oh. I mean, they they were there. It was a fun act. Character wise, there wasn't much to them. They were just, you know, a very fun 
uh, act for the younger audience. Once they turned heel, that's when it really did a 180 and really got to see what the Usos can do. They started to really show that urban-esque type of promo style. And it really clicked with a lot of people. And I felt like it was very relatable to me and my demographic. And even to other demographics, it stood out from the rest of the pack. And that's how the Usos were able to encapsulate a lot of wrestling fans at that time. And still are doing it to this day. Even though they're kind of Roman Reigns' bitches in a sense. They still have that cadence to them that makes them stand out from the rest of the tag team division. The Young Bucks, as characters... <laughs> As baby faces, I think they're they're good. They're good baby faces, character wise. If we're comparing the two baby face tag teams as characters, I would probably say maybe the Usos by a little bit. By a little bit, I would say the Usos were better. As heels, I would say it's almost really difficult because they're heels in almost two different ways. The Usos were great are are still great heels. And they're like the badass heels. They, they, you want them to win and you like the way they are, but you understand that they're also bad guys. The Yum Bucks, they're heels, but they're detestable heels. Like, they, you legitimately don't like the Yum Bucks. Like, there are a lot of times when I watch AEW, I want to see them get their faces bashed in just because they dress so damn ugly. They dress like fucking 80 year old shower curtains and they come out and they, imitating Batista and Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan and doing the pose and whatnot like they're just so they're ugh, like I, they're cringe they are cringe but that's the thing is that they're heels and you're supposed to hate them so when I think about it that way I'm like you know what even though they're being cringe I'm pretty sure the intent is for them to be cringe because they've shown in the past that they cannot be cringe as baby faces even though they've had very cringe moments as baby faces too let me not let me not add that up. They've had very cringe moments in the baby faces. I think part of that is just who they are. But they amped it up when they became heels. And it's it's respectable. It's respectable that they've really stuck to their craft. And it's also respectable that I don't like them because they're supposed to be bad guys. So in a way, I feel like I should be giving it to the Yum Bucks. But because the, the, the cadence... And the presentation of the Usos is just so recognizable. I would give it more to the Usos here. In terms of promos, it is bar none that is going to the Usos. Like the Usos, like hands down, they win. The Young Bucks, they they they've never clicked with me on in promos. Like they've always just been a bit over the top as baby faces sometimes especially mad jacks mad jackson is just not a good actor he just never has been it seems very forced or i can still recall a lot of lines he said where i'm like somebody else please take the microphone away from him nick jackson is slightly better than matt on a mic but it's they're both they're both that's their weak spot in terms of the Young Bucks as a whole, I would say the mic is the weak spot for them. Whereas the Usos, that might be their strong suit. The Usos, as baby faces, you know, they, they were really one-liners. They had their responses back, but it was no zingers. When they turned heel, the rap battles with the New Day. The back and forths that Jey Uso had with Roman Reigns. The back and forth they both had with Roman Reigns, with John Cena, with other men on mic, with other tag teams. Their heel run really showed just how strong these two can be when given lines or making their own lines. I like to assume that they're interjecting some in there, but they have that delivery that the Young Bucks fail to have. So it is very easy, like no discussion the Usos win in this aspect. But when we get into in-ring, that's why I feel like a lot of people are going to have a difference of opinion because the Usos... Like I said earlier, they've evolved in the ring, and I feel like they have a very good style and one of the most unique styles in WWE. But the super kicks, the Samoan drops, unique, but at the same time, like being that having that Samoan lineage, you see a lot of the same Samoans use that type of wrestling style. Uh, the Roman Reigns, he doesn't do a super kick, but you could see a lot of the parallels between the Usos and Roman Reigns in their style. You could see a lot of the parallels between the Usos and Rikishi in their style, between the Usos and maybe an early day Manu, or the Usos and Sean Fatu. Uh, you could see a lot of that Samoan drive. They, they used a lot of the same moves, and there's nothing wrong with that inherently, but... 
the Usos has that style and it works for them. The Young Bucks. This is where it becomes very subjective, but then I could turn it into a very objective thing real quickly. Let's start with the subjective. The Young Bucks, when they started, they were spot monkeys. If you do not like the high-flying aspect, not much ring psychology, just spot, 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 move, 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 third gear all the way through, then you're just not going to like the Young Bucks early on in their career. And that's fine. No, you're not, you, you don't have to like the Young Bucks. I know a lot of people don't like the Young Bucks. I myself did not like the Young Bucks early on. But I think you would be absolutely a buffoon if you go into 2019 or 2021 Young Bucks and say that's all they are because you're absolutely incorrect. I've seen their entire AEW run. And yes, when I recalled some of their matches in early AEW, yes, a lot of them were very high fly. A lot of them were very spotty, especially the match with the Young Bucks in uh, Private Party, like the second episode of AEW Dynamite. That was a very spotty match, but I loved that match. It being very spotty. But then, as you go deeper into their AEW run, you can recall a lot of matches where they slowed it down. Especially the Young Bucks versus FTR. That was a very slow burn Young Bucks match. A very slowly paced Young Bucks match. You can say a lot of that is FTR, but the Young Bucks are there. And obviously, when they took control and they were able to tell that story of, you know, Matt Jackson and his foot, like, they can tell the story of, you know, a body being aimed at and limb targeting and making attacks at the right time. Or when they segregate their opponents as heels, they're able to really work together and really create that dynamic of what a great tag team is. They can work that type of match. They can work the the uh, hardcore, uh, maybe you could say in the hardcore, you know, basic hardcore level match. I still recall their uh, fall scale anywhere match against the Butcher and the Blade, which is really fun. Of course, they have the really fun, goofy, yet very intoxicatingly exciting match, like the one they had with Stadium Stampede, the very first one. That was so much fun. They could have a very uh, old school Southern style wrestling match i'm not thinking out the top of my head but i've seen them have it and it works to their benefit they could have that five star six star seven star classic like the ones they had with kenny omega and hangman page or the ones they've had with the lucha brothers and that steel cage match which was not very spotty that was very bloody that had a, a combination of just about all the styles you want to see in there they can do it all and i feel like that's what gives them a leg up over the usos is that the usos they have their style and it works for them, but I've not been able to see them do too much else outside of what they do now. And maybe the that extreme rule style when I see them go up against the New Day in a Hell in a Cell match. Great match. Great match. But name me some other Uso matches where they were differently than they have in previous matches because i can't really think of many i can name like five young bucks matches that are different from the others that a lot of that is because they've been outside the bubble wwe has been the the home place for the usos that's really all they know with the young bucks they've been to the uk they've been to japan they've been to spain they've been to mexico they've been to us and south america they've been all over the place and you know when you've been when your world traveled, you know more than somebody who's just been around the block and been to a few other states, you know, went to college. Like, you know what I mean? I would probably want to learn from somebody who went to Japan for like two, three months and came back with knowledge than somebody who just studied the art of Japanese culture from college. I would want to know about the person who went to Japan because they actually live that Japanese style. They actually worked that Japanese style. They might actually know some authentic Japanese and could teach me a few things. Now, I'm not saying the person who went to college and learned about it has a degree can't teach me a thing or two, but I would definitely want to learn from the person who's actually been there. That's how I see it. And that's why the Young Bucks are better in the ring. Influence. This one, I feel like it, it. you can have a bit of a debate here. The Young Bucks, they have been all over the world. And I feel like the more I see wrestling today, the more I see the Young Bucks in a lot of tag teams that I see today. Private Party, that is a lot of Young Bucks influence in Private Party. Uh, a lot of tag teams on the independent scene, very heavily influenced by the Young Bucks and that very spotty, style or the way they're able to tell stories or the way they use the super kicks obviously super kicks are the front of usos too 
the Usos, their style is is not super influential, mainly because their style is derived from people who have used it in the past, and it's generational. It's a generational style, and that in itself is influential, but I can't say that the Usos are like style is influential. The style they work is, but not their style. The Young Bucks, the way they've worked in the the path they've made, that in itself is influential. I mean, obviously the work they've done in AEW, that in itself is influential. I it's I just gotta give it to the Young Bucks. So when I break down those categories, you know, it goes the Young Bucks, the Usos, the Young Bucks, the Young Bucks, the Young Bucks. Like the Young Bucks basically just dominate that entire category. Or maybe I have it like three to two. Is it three to two? The Young Bucks, Usos, Usos, Young Bucks. I have it three to two. But either way, when I break it down that way, I, there's no other way I could put it. The Young Bucks are just better wrestlers. They're just better wrestlers. They're better in almost the overall aspects of being professional wrestlers than the Usos. But do you guys have a better argument than I do? Do you think that the Usos are better? Comment down below. Let your boy know. Let's get a discussion started in the comment section. And I'll talk to you guys later. Before I go, real quickly, tonight I'll be live on twitch.tv slash suplex for roads to the top. <laughs> Please tune in because I don't want to suffer by myself.